Hello everybody, welcome to Cory Turner Talks Cars, and welcome to my Halloween special. As a matter of fact, I'm all dressed up in my favorite costume, and if you know me at all, you will know that selfies are, well, it's an extremely appropriate costume for me because I take way too many selfies. Now, in honor of Halloween, I am going to talk about my favorite car rebadging. For some, it's a nightmare. For me, I actually think it's kind of cool. If you don't know what car rebadging is, then just hold on because we're going to talk about it in depth and I'll let you know what that is. But first, I found something you have to see. It is this bad boy right here. Hopefully you can see that. It is a Snickers bar. Now what's special about a Snickers bar? Take a closer look. This is a pecan Snickers bar. That's right. It is made with Texas pecans. And let me tell you something, this is a little slice of heaven. Now, I have since learned that these aren't everywhere. I actually got really lucky and came across one. When I, after I ate it, I begged for some more. And I actually have another one right here. Well, I actually have two. I'm gonna eat that one. But this one, I'm gonna actually give away. I know. It is hard, but this is my trick-or-treat special. So in order to go get the Snickers, the Snickers Pecan, uh, all you have to do is, is any of our contests, just go to CoreyTurnerTalks.com, click on Contact Us, fill out the form, and just put Snickers Pecan on there, um, and I will enter you into the drawing. We're going to do the drawing here in the next few days because we want to give this bad boy away because I'm going to tell you right now, if it's sitting around my house too long... I'm going to eat it. I can't explain to you how good this thing is. It is absolutely amazing. Texas pecans, caramel, and milk chocolate. It is a Snickers bar. Now, I do love the original Snickers. Uh, there are many times where that is my lunch. That's how I get through the day. But I'll tell you what. If you have a chance to have a Texas uh, pecan, Snickers pecan, you've got to grab hold of one of those. Those are a bad boy. So be sure to enter the drawing. Go to CoreyTurnerTalks.com. Click on Contact Us, fill out the form with your information, and put um, Snickers Pecan in the subject line or anywhere they're in it, and uh, we'll enter you into the drawing. We'll do that here in the next few days. We'll give that bad boy away. Okay, so I said that this Halloween special is all about car rebadging. So what is car rebadging? That is when a, a, a brand, right, takes a car from another brand, adds their logos on it, their decals, sometimes does some body modifications, maybe some other modifications, and then sells it as their own. Now, this goes way back, even back to the Nash and Ajax days. Okay, that may be too far back. Let's go a little bit for some of us. Uh, let's think about GM. GM is really, truly notorious for this. Uh, when they decided to bring back the GTO for the Pontiac brand, well, that was a Holden, right, out of Australia, right? So that was a rebadging. Pretty much every car that Saturn put out in its final few years of existence, existence was a rebadge from somebody else, right? So it's a matter of maybe, maybe this manufacturer, you know, maybe they have a gap in their lineup. Maybe they have an economy car. Maybe they have the big family sedan, but they don't have that, maybe that kind of sports sedan in the middle. So instead of spending the millions and millions and millions, okay, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars to develop a car to fit that niche, they just will rebrand a car from somebody else and then they will call it their own, right? Um, so there is one rebadging in particular that some call a nightmare, which makes it appropriate for Halloween. I actually think it's pretty cool and I would get one. And it was done by our friends at Aston Martin. All right, so what? Aston Martin did a rebadge? Re okay, so let's talk about the why. Okay, so it was 2010. Uh, we're coming kind of out of the, uh, the depression, as you will, right? The economic downturn that started in 2008. People weren't able to spend possibly as much money on the big V8s and the big V12s. So Aston Martin decided that there was a need for a smaller car. Okay, that was the public... Uh, you know, press release. Here's what was really going on. They were in trouble because they were not meeting uh, the CO2 emissions that were required um, by the government. So they needed to find a car that was going to be much more, you know, environmentally friendly and help them kind of get back in line and offset the 
you know, the V8s and the V12s and the big bad boys that we know Aston Martin for. So what car did they go out to get? They got this. And what is this? This is a Toyota IQ. Now, if you're here in the United States, we also would know it as a Scion, right? Uh, but the IQ. Now, here's what's crazy. When you look at the IQ, most people immediately think smart car and all the dimensions are close. Where the smart car was a two-seater, the IQ is a four-seater. Don't even ask me how that happens, but there are four seats in it. Tons of airbags, right, for safety. Um, but it's also a four-cylinder where the um, smart car was not, right? So, okay, so we have this Toyota IQ. And how can you even call that an Aston Martin? What could you possibly do to that car uh, to feel right in putting that badge on it? Now, many people say they never should have put the badge on it. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of the poor man's Aston Martin, right? This is what they did. It came out looking like this. Okay, so let's talk about this car for a second or two. Okay, so it's a 1.3 liter inline four, makes 97 horsepower. So we're not talking about, uh, you know, any crazy power, but we are talking about a car that's doing like 58, 59 miles per gallon. So it's definitely doing what they wanted for the economy uh, and offset uh, the uh, V8s and the V12s that we normally know for that. Now, of course, they, they put their own um, the Aston Martin badges on there. They did that, of course. Uh, they did the, you can check it out what they did at the hood. They put those very aggressive scoops there in vents on the hood. They put on the big aluminum grill on the front. They did different LED lights in the back. Uh, they redid the sides. And where they really spent money and where they really did some incredible things was with the interior. You have to check out this interior. Okay, so you know they have full grain leather. Uh, it's it's hand stitched seats, uh, machine aluminum trim, Alcantara headliner that's across the top. I mean the 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 wood grain that they did inside. The interior is all about luxury, and it's all about Aston Martin, and that's where the money was really spent, and that's where the really touches were. The outside is great. They didn't touch really the mechanics of the car. They, they didn't need to. They, they needed what it produced, so where could they make the touches? They did it on the interior, and I gotta say, I think they did an absolutely amazing job with that, and not only did they do all those touches, they knew that to, to please buyers, they were going to have to offer some crazy choices. So the interior colors, the exterior colors, it came with the ability to really make this car, uh, as far as a, from a buyer's experience, really make this car theirs uh, and, and customize it and, and make it really, really special. Um, had just a ton of different options in there. Uh, and, and, you know, the bad part was you're still talking about a car that we're selling well, it was really expensive, right? So, I mean, we're talking about selling up, uh, you know, 40,000 uh, pounds. It wasn't available here in the States. I wish it was available here in the States. You know, 40,000 pounds, that's a lot of money to spend. In 2010, when they announced that the Signet, this is the Aston Martin Signet, was going to be coming out, um, you know, they had a plan to sell about 4,000 units. So, they started selling in 2011, and then by 2013, they realized that it just wasn't going any there and they stopped production and they only sold roughly about 150 units. All right. So the plan was 4,000 units. They only sold 150 units. Now, I know it's a rebadge. I know it's a Toyota IQ. But at the end of the day, they made it an Aston Martin. And it's a limited production. It only was in for 2011, 2012, 2013. So roughly almost three years. There's only 150 examples of them that were sold. Will this become a collector's item? I, I have to think it will at some point. Now, don't get me wrong. It is bizarre. But as you know, I love bizarre. If it's small, weird, a fingerprint, you know, something different, something out of the norm, I am all about it. I wish I could get my hands on one of these. I would first love uh, to see exactly the, the interior. When you look at the pictures of the interior, I feel like you can actually just smell that leather, smell how that new car smell. I mean, it just looks that sharp to me. I would love to get my hands on one. I know when I start driving, I'm driving IQ. I'm going to have the performance of it, the handling of it, the experience of it. But at the end of the day, you're owning an Aston Martin, which is pretty darn 
Cool. So have you seen one of these? Have you been around a Signet, an Aston Martin Signet? If so, leave me a comment. Please let me know. Is it as impressive, the interior is as impressive as it is from the pictures? I understand it's small. It's in a Toyota. But it, did they do a good job in at least trying to make it as close to an Aston Martin as possible? Leave that in the message. Don't forget, it is time to win something you can't just go pick up everywhere at least that's what i'm finding out a snickers pecan this thing is fantastic all you have to do is go to coreyturnertalks.com click on contact us fill out the information there and put snickers pecan somewhere on that form and send it our way remember to like comment and share please subscribe to our youtube channel let's talk about cars tomorrow